So very classical, and whatever they're doing, they're doing in the woods. Doing it in the woods. With festoons and not much clothing on. There's an old curiosity shop. Good morning, everyone. I am Scott at a stoplight. We have not been thrifting in a while, and it's time to go do it. So, woke up today, and it's only like 22 degrees. Woo! And now I see little, and now I see snow flurries out there. I should, I should not be surprised because I was watching my friends in Ohio. And they had snow flurries like two days ago, and it was cold. Anyway, I'm leaving Philadelphia right now. I'm headed towards the Ben Franklin Bridge. We're gonna go into New Jersey and do some thrifting over there. And then uh, late in the afternoon when I cross the river again over another bridge back into Pennsylvania, we'll do some more thrifting until we get back into Philadelphia. And hopefully, You'll stay tuned until the end of the video, and I'll show you everything that I bought today. Well, maybe not everything, you know, I save a few things for the kitchen counter, but I'll show you most of what I buy today. So let's go thrifting. Okay, everybody always wants to know where I am. I don't usually do this. I'm going to tell you where I am. Oh, wait a minute. That man thinks I'm filming him. Hold on. All right, I'm up here somewhere in North Philadelphia. I don't know. Anyway, it's called Second Avenue Thrift. I decided not to cross the bridge and go into Jersey yet. I'm going to do Pennsylvania first. Let me get inside before I freeze. All right, let's see if we get lucky in the lamp department today. Mm, I don't know. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Shh, she ain't lighting up my life today. Come on, Debbie Boone. Was it Debbie Boone? Hmm. What is this thing? Oh, that's some steampunk stuff. $9.99? No. I have no interest. Okay, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Let's look in the tool department. What's that for? Toilet paper. Hmm. Well, these are old. Those are old. Look at that. Two ninety nine. I just might have to get those because it's like vintage garden tools. I love the green. Should I buy these? I do need a manicure. Okay, pots and pans, pots and pans. I don't ever buy the corn flour because I always see just tons of it. You know, there just seems to be uh, an, an endless supply of it in almost every store I go. This is from the 30s. And it's Edwin M. Knowles. Made in America, 22 karat gold, yeah. 1930s. See that little funny little cut off edge, beveled edge? Oh, poor old glass bake. I wish glass bake would do better than it does. We know what those are. Glass bake, glass bake. It just, I don't know, it doesn't have the money power that, uh, Mc, that, uh, McKee, mm, that Pyrex does. I still like it. Uh, some old pie pans. Uh, Alright. No jadeite swirled mixing bowls. No, not today. Not this trip. Alright, let's turn the corner and see what we find. I know I need to start going through these, ba these bags on the wall. I just don't have the patience to do it. All right, let's see what's around the corner. Toasters, electric frying pans, crock pots. 
Let's see on this side. What do we see? A big candy kiss in red. Yeah, here we go. These things just, well, they usually don't do very well. They're usually made in Japan, Germany, or Czechoslovakia. Quite often this, it's lusterware. Sugar, coffee, rice, and tea. Those are attractive though. Uh, well, there's a big crack on the back of that one. Let's see which country these are from. These are Czech, yeah, Czechoslovakia. $15 for the four. Now that's not bad. And yellow is on sale today. Czechoslovakia, $15 for the four of them. But look, sugar is cracked. We're not supposed to have too much sugar anyway. Let's see what, uh, coffee is in good shape. I don't see any damage on rice. Let's look at tea. Mm, and tea looks okay as well. So the only damage we've got is on sugar. Uh, but that's a significant crack in the back and in the front. Uh, well, of course, the one thing that I'm really interested in has no price tag, so I would have to go to the back and get one. Um, probably a Royal Copley Duck. Looks very Royal Copley to me. So we're in the 1950s and 60s. I like to collect these and put them all together uh, and hold on for my autumn sales that I do every October. Mm. Yeah, I think I will make my way to the back. Let's see if I can get him for, oh, how about $2.99? What do you think? What do you think they're gonna put on it? Let's go back and see if we get $2.99. Oh, no, you do not. No, 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 no. I am just going to, before I pick this up, just tell me somebody has just thrown this here. This is a pay, this is a cardboard, e cardboard egg, car you know what? There's a price tag on it. I have to go sit down. Wait a minute. Let's see what it says. You kidding me? A dollar ninety-nine for an empty egg carton. You can buy a whole 12 dozen eggs for less, for two fifty. Two dollars for an egg carton? Two dollars for an, an empty egg carton? Yeah. This doesn't make any sense. Is this crazy? I think this is insane. Oh my gosh. This lady thinks it's funny. She's laughing too. I can't believe it. Well, go out and buy yourself a dozen eggs. Mmm. Oh, that that was it I mean that that that's the whole reason why I got out of bed today that made it totally worth it that that empty egg carton I'm gonna be talking about that for weeks all right what have we got back here any good glass any good glass oh there's a frog a ribbit let's see oh it's got a big chip in it I can feel it yeah that's kind of rough two bucks nope That's an old stick right there with etching on it. I only see one. Oh, this is mercury. That's pretty. It's not old. $2.99 and it lights up. Oh, look at that. Look at that. A watering can that lights, does it blink? Off. I don't know, maybe you have Maybe it changes colors. On, off, I don't know. That's kind of neat. For decorating, but you know, I don't know. I don't buy new stuff. Should I buy this? Would somebody, would somebody, it's $2.99. You know, it's got to be worth it for me if I'm going to resell it. Could I get 12 bucks for that? See, my problem is they probably sell this at the dollar store for a dollar. That's my problem is I don't go to those, I don't go enough to know, and those aren't old. I mean, that thing was neat, but I don't want to buy it and then think I can make money, some money on it, and I can't. It's 
got to be worth listing. Oh, wait a minute. What is this? That's a chrome uh, tray from the Depression era. That a coffee pot and cream and sugar would sit on. Probably Farber. Farber Brothers, Brooklyn, yeah. Seven ninety nine. Mm, nope, I'd give him three bucks for it. If it was really deco, maybe, but it's just kind of eh. See, a cream and sugar like that would sit on it. Seven ninety nine. Hold your breath, we're gonna walk by that egg carton again. See it? That is just it. That takes the cake. And this, you know, I don't have a lid and it's in excellent condition. Really good shape. Six bucks, let me focus again. The Hall Apple, I really, really, I rarely find one that's in this good shape. I mean, that is in really good condition, but I don't have a big lid. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know I should buy it. There's the Nittany Lion. I should buy it and hold on to it and look for a lid. Wow, this looks like a really nice EAPG water pitcher. Look at that. Ten dollars. That's somebody's yard sale price tag, I guess. Oh, and the thrift store wants ten ninety nine. Well, it's pretty, 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 pretty. It's a heavy one. Feels like it's uh... yeah, it's nice, but I don't think I want to pay ten ninety nine for it. This is pretty here, but we're missing. Sugar Bowl is missing its lid. Teapot's missing its lid, and boy, there's a big chunk out of that. Can you see it? Wow, oh, this doesn't look American. I can't see. Wait a minute. Oh, it's a sad Sadler. Is it Sadler, England? That's too bad it's missing stuff, missing things. I'm finding a lot of missing, chipped, or too expensive today. It's only one of those in glass bake. Somebody ripped the price tag off of it. Some more nice looking uh, glass. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, it's not old. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's pretty. A luster milk pitcher, or yeah, probably a milk pitcher. I don't think it looks like it had a lid. No, I don't believe that had a lid. Mm, Seven ninety nine Bavarian, Bavarian German lusterware. Seven ninety nine. Uh. Hmm. I don't know. What would you do? Oh, look. That's kind of neat. Okay, I think I spy my first piece of uranium glass today. Let's hold our breath. Hold our fingers. No, not hold our fingers. That wasn't right. Hold your breath. <laughs> I don't care what you do with your fingers. Let's see. What have we got? It is. It's a divided... Uh, little divided tray there and owie owie there's a nice big chip see that mmm there's another one there that one's not so bad but that one's pretty significant doggone it seven dollars now you know, I know there are folks who just want to display it. They don't care if it's chipped or not. They'll put it in their cabinets and just put their black lights on it. So I do get that. I know there's resale value in it. It just bugs me that it's got that big chip on the end. So it's just always going to be a damaged piece. 
Um, you know, that doesn't mean that it still wouldn't sell for 20 bucks or so. Oh my gosh. Well. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm just making noises. Okay, they priced the duck for me. What, what did I say? I was hoping for like $2.99. How much was it? $4.99? No, $5.99. $6? Let's talk about it in the car. Okay, I have just finished with that uh, Second Avenue thrift shop, and I'm across the street in the Dunkin' Donuts parking lot. Um, I do like to take a little break during the day, and I got a late start today, so I've got some Dunkin' Donut gift cards I'm trying to use up. I have gotten over the fact that they don't sell ham anymore, so now I'm eating little... Um, turkey sausage and egg wraps <laughs> so I got one of those and now I'm running my mouth and it's gonna be cold and a little iced coffee that's right and it's like 25 degrees outside now look let's talk about that shopping excursion that you just watched I am not trying to be a negative Nelly but you have to this is the this is the this is the honest side of it I simply don't just stumble into thrift shops and find, you know, Tiffany lamps and, and uh, McKee polka dot uranium refrigerator dishes worth $400, although they did happen once. There are a lot of days like this where things are broken, chipped, missing lids, or the price points are just mm, a few dollars higher than what I really want to spend. Now, I know a lot of folks watching who don't buy and sell or list on eBay and so forth, they say, oh, you should have bought, you should have bought, you should have bought, I would have bought, I would have bought. But remember, I'm looking at stuff, and when I see a piece that's got a chip on it and it's a little bit higher than I want to pay, um, I'm already having in my mind an idea of what that usually sells for. And then I have to also think about the time investment, as we've said before, the cleaning it, photographing it, editing the photographs, typing up the listing, getting it listed and all of that stuff and then the cost involved in shipping. There's so much more involved than just wiping it off with a baby wipe and going and sticking it in an antique booth. It's a whole different process. So I could have spent a lot more in there and then at the end of the day you come home and you unwrap everything and you go, gosh, I wish I hadn't paid this much and half of the stuff is chipped and cracked and it takes willpower but some days you just gotta step away walk away and say no i'm gonna wait and 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 see if i can find something better than the chipped and the cracked and the slightly overpriced so uh you know yeah the royal copley duck at six dollars you know just decided to leave that on the shelf but let's see what i did buy and I just had to, I don't know, they just seem like classic, probably 1930s hedge trippers, hedge tripper, hedge clippers, calm down, 1930s, 40s hedge tr trimmers with the lock on there and everything, um, so I can sharpen them probably better than any plastic mess that you buy today and uh, I know you're saying okay you live in a condominium on the eighth floor in Center City Philadelphia yes I do but some point in life I'm gonna have some hedges to trim That's all I'm gonna say about that don't ask me any questions but I'm gonna put these away I'm gonna put these away they were in like two bucks, three bucks. And let me bought one other thing and you didn't see it in the store and I'm gonna show it to you now. Uh, look at this. It's an amber console bowl. I did pay $8 for it. I have no idea what this pattern is, but I'm gonna show it to you. I uh, haven't looked it up yet. We'll take a close look. Um, I see a lot of either Greek 
Looks to me like we've got some Greeks or some Romans running around scantily clad with festoons. Uh, a few of them have some diaphanous gowns on, it appears. Um, so very classical, and whatever they're doing, they're doing in the woods. Doing it in the woods. With festoons and not much clothing on. Oh dear. Anyway, can you see that? Yeah. So I will be excited to find out what the etching is on this. We've got no mark on the bottom. So we could be looking at a Faustoria or a Cambridge piece. Mm-hmm. See what I mean? They're up to springtime frivolities. So this, you know, okay. $7.99, but you know, it's not damaged, it's unusual, not an etching that you see every day. This will have some saleability, collectability, and we just have to get it cleaned up. So that and my hedge trippers, that was it. Uh, I'm going to eat my little sandwich here, which is now cold, and head on to the next thrift store. I'm so glad that you're hanging out with me, and that was kind of a fun trip. Okay, store number two. Now, this is the Goodwill that uh, has kind of high prices, and they have no specials here. That's right. They just don't do it. You never get half price or 33% off tags, so it's always hit or miss, but uh, let's... Let's think positively. Today's going to be a good day. We're going to find something. I just know it. I can feel it. Let's go do it. Okay, do not be fooled when you see these. It's not uranium glass, and it's not from the Depression era. Uh, Martha Stewart manufactured this, or one of her companies did anyway. And even if we didn't turn it upside down to see the MS Martha Stewart, I forget whether it's Martha Stewart, Manu Martha Stewart something, anyway, it's under there, MS. The thing about this is that nothing like this was made in the Depression era in that, in that size. But there weren't any Depression tumblers or stems that were this size. You see how big those are? Yeah, so in case you ever see those, Martha put out, she put out some nice things. Uh, but a lot of it, even though it has that depression green look, you'll be disappointed if you think it's going to glow. Uh, okay, let's just see what else we can find. Mm hmm Well, the only thing I see that I really like is this big picture. It's a print, and it's classic 1940s. This style print was so popular. Still life, but huge floral arrangements. Oh, let me get it in the frame. Um, a wooden frame. Um, there are a few issues. One, um, the frame would have never been reinforced like this on the front. Somebody, uh, the frame was coming loose and they just hammered uh, these zigzag metal clips in there. I don't know what you call them, but you, you hammer those in and then the mitered um, joint will hold together so that wouldn't have been done that way originally I don't know why they didn't put them on the back instead of on the front so that really decoratively messes up the frame and this isn't something that's very popular but just classic 1940s if you're going for that look old print it's in good shape but no, it's just something that I think I will pass on. I did, however, find a welding gun. I've already got um, one, and uh, but this is a duplicate of the one that I already have. So I'm going to plug this in and make sure it heats up. Um, I've got the exact same uh, welding. So I'm sorry, did I say welding? I have the same soldering gun, which was my father's and I use it when I do my radio repair. But this is a good one, it's an old one. This goes all the way back to uh, the 1950s and 60s, see there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a really nice one. So it's only $12.99. Uh, I'm gonna plug it in, make sure it's working, and then I'll have a second one. So that made it worth it for me. But other than that, I don't think this 
goodwill is going to pay off, so we'll head to the next one. <gasps> I'm about to flip my lid again. Look at this majestic floor model radio. This is so unusual and not very common. Take a look at the grill. It is a peacock. Have you seen that before? You know you haven't. Oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm really flipping out today. Now, sadly, this is in their silent auction section. I mean, you know, the cabinet needs work. But let me back up. I'm in somebody's way. Oh, I just cannot believe it. Here's a beautiful oak kitchen cabinet. Uh, this is also in the silent auction section. Let's see if we can find a maker's mark. It's either going to be sellers or who's. These tambour sliding doors here always need a little bit of wax. Let's see if we've got anything on the inside. And I was trying to see. Well, let's see if the flower sifter is there. You got it. It's still there. Sometimes there are recipe cards or things on the inside. Well, at least the flower sifter is there and the bread bin. And it is uh, got its original finish. That would be cool if that were cream and green, but oh well. You take what you can get. There should be racks on either side under here. Uh, there are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's in good shape. Well, who knows? And look, even for the, for the coffee. Okay, it's rare that that's still there. Wow. I think this is for... I th think... Maybe you kept sugar in that. I'm sorry, not coffee. Yeah, that was probably for the sugar. Yeah, that, was be, that would be for sugar. I'm just flipping out. Look at this radio. I want to get in there with my soldering gun and tube tester. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is, a, this is an amazing radio. This is even unusual on the back to have the cutouts of the G clef. Oh my gosh. Okay, I've got to find out what number that is. I'm going to put in a silent bid. I probably won't get it. Oh my gosh. All right. There's all your butter print back there. In the silent auction section. I don't see anything else I'm going to flip my lid over. The current bid on the Hoosier cabinet is about $285. See people write it down in this book. But I've got to find out what the number is uh, for the radio so I can bid on it. I hope it's not already sold. Oh my gosh, I bet it's already sold. All right, I've got to stand way back here because it's so cramped in here. I can't really get you to see it. That is a modular 19, late 1920s, early 1930s kitchen cabinet. Remember we saw an advertisement. I showed you one. Oh, it's been a while now. And anyway, there would be two of these flanked on either side of a Hoosier cabinet, similar to the one in oak that we just saw. Now someone has put this faux, I don't know, bamboo, whatever that is on the front. Um, but these are going to be old nickel plated, um, chrome plated hinges underneath. And if we chip away at this paint, we can see the original 1930s green. See that right there? Could you strip the yellow off and preserve the 1930s green on the bottom? That's not easy to do, and probably the answer would be no. Oh, let's go down here and see a little bit more. This is the old green underneath. So, yeah, there's the old green. Doggone it! 
All right, now I'm making a mess. They're gonna get mad at me. Let me stand back up. It's only $30. It's got its original hardware on it. Um, and probably that red is, well, no, it looks like the inside might have been green as well. I'm not really sure about the inside. Probably inside's probably been repainted at some time. So, freestanding 1930s kitchen cabinet, $30. It's going to need restoration to bring it back. Um, but yeah, $30, that's not a bad price. Oh, that green is just dying to come back out of there, isn't it? Uh, oh my goodness. Okay, here's more excitement. Another Anchor Hocking Rings pitcher. Uh, banded rings. I just found one of these in this same thrift store. Oh, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago. So, Hocking made these in several different sizes. Um, once again, as I said before, you always want to look at the rings because a lot of times that paint comes off. So, it is $3.99 and that should be a $25 pitcher. So, I'm very excited to find that. Uh, Wow, look at this. I don't know who she was, but how could you possibly leave her behind? Mm. That is a beautiful period frame. And uh, she's only $4. Look at that. Probably dates to about... Oh, I don't know, 1912, 1915, 1910, something, Edwardian, I think. My goodness. Well, we're going to have to give her a name. That's what we're going to have to do. Anchor Hocking made these from the late 20s through the 30s. My goodness. And uh, let's see, then about two steps forward, literally about two steps forward, is a uranium glass vase. Um, I have bought and sold this one before, and I want to try to remember and say that it's a Jeanette piece. Uh, it's only $2.99. Anyway, that does glow under black light, and it is a 1930s piece. So... <laughs> I've only been in this store for like three minutes and already a couple of nice pieces of glass from the Depression era. And I do see the Royal Ruby Hocking vase here and they want $1.50 for that. I see quite a few of those and I normally hold on to those until the Christmas season, obviously, because I uh, pair them up with the green, which is pretty easy to find as well. Here are some more... That's not hawking, that's too thick, but that one might be. No, I think it's the same thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, I won't repeat myself. Well, actually, I will. Jeanette, I think I remember. Yes, they made it in lots of different finishes. 1930s uranium glass, beautiful. Anchor Hocking Rings, Pitcher, another one, a different shape, again, beautiful, 1930s. You didn't see me pick this up. I've seen this before and always just never bought it, but I think I'll keep it. It has, mm, <gasps> oh my goodness, oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this, hold your breath, let's see. It's got to be damaged, it's got to be. No, 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 is it? Not on that side. <gasps> Not on that side. Oh my goodness, I don't think there's any damage. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Okay, hold on, hold on, let me move some things. Now, everybody recognizes this as a Hall, H-U-L-L, vase. <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, what is this mess? I can't believe it, but woohoo! Let's get in the car. Oh my goodness, I'm in some kind of a snow squall. Ah, I didn't even wear my scarf today. Okay, it's been a strange day, but we have to press on. You see what I go through? Rain, sleet snow squalls 
Anyway, I've pulled over again. Uh, it was very blinding for a moment there, but now this is what happens when you get these squalls. Then some sun comes out. But I pulled into another Dunkin' Donut. Why not? You know when I'm out, I will stop and get two or three coffees all day. And um, because I'm driving all over the place, I now have I crossed over into Jersey yet? No, I'm still in PA. We're getting ready to, to take the Bristol Bridge into Burlington, New Jersey. And so this is my second stop and my second coffee. All right, what did I get? Blah, blah, blah. Don't get your anchor hawking Windsor, Wexford, and Waterford mixed up. Now, this is the Waterford, not to be confused with Waterford Christmas, uh, Crystal. W-A-T-E-R-F-O-R-D, Waterford, or Waterford, as, as I would say it. Sometimes called Waffle. This is a depression pattern. So we're talking something like 1938 to 44. It's one of those late 30s into the early war years anchor hawking. I like this pattern. It's a tumbler and it was a dollar because it was half price. The anchor hawking Wexford is very plentiful. And that's that sort of 1960s pattern, which I see everywhere. So and I don't have any Windsor to show you, but that's another pattern. So, late 30s into the early 40s, Anchor Hawking Tumbler in the waffle, quote unquote waffle, Waterford pattern, Waterford pattern. Very inexpensive glass, I like it. Here's a little Gemco Sugar Shaker. That is glass with that wonderful baked on blue color. And, uh, and, and an orange lid, so we're looking very, almost Howard Johnson's there, but a different color blue. That I'll sell the, uh, the, the Hawking Tumbler I'm going to keep. Uh, Fenton, no doubt, yes, it's crystal, and I don't mind buying uh, crystal glass. And this one is embossed Fenton on the bottom. Boy, the sun is out now. So again, we're after 1971. A Fenton crystal candy dish, that'll be for sale. I have to wash that, wash that. And then, woo, hoo, hoo, okay. Now, if only we could turn back the clock to when I had feathered hair and Boy George was all over the radio. If we could do that, this would be worth three times what it is now. Yeah, Hall. Roseville, we know, McCoy, all of the common Weller and so forth, what a hit that pottery has taken. I still love Hall, which is spelled H-U-L-L, -L, not to be confused with H-A-L-L. -L. This is Hall Art, and I can't see now if you're seeing it. Okay. That is probably about as tall as they come. That's the tallest hall vase I've ever had. And I was holding my breath to see if it w had any chips or cracks. It doesn't. So it's in excellent condition. The colors are going to be washed out in the car, but it's almost always a beautiful pastel uh, blue, pink, green, yellow. This stuff was so popular in the 40s and highly collected 30 years ago condition excellent I'm gonna just hold on to it for now um, most of as I said most of those pieces there's not a great deal of value but I'll check on that and you know it the resale value on this by the way I paid twelve dollars for it the resale value on this whether it's in an antique shop or just an eBay auction could be no more than about 30 bucks um, but it is very tall so I, I need to go and look and see I might just hold on to this I do have sort of a growing haul collection because uh, when I find it in good shape I buy it and I keep it all right the Sun is out just like that it's still freezing and I've got about two more thrift shops to go to, so I hope you're still watching. This is going to be quite an epic video, isn't it? Two and a half hours long. You're going to have to take potty breaks.
was in the year of 89 on that old Chicago line when the winter wind was blowing the grill. The rails were froze, the wheels were cold, and then the air brakes wouldn't hold, and number nine came pouring down the hill. Oh, the runaway train come down the track and she blew. The runaway train came down the track and she blew. The runaway train came down the track, her whistle wide and a throttle back and she blew. Oh, the engineer said the train was halt and she blew. The engineer said the train was halt and she blew. The engineer said the train was halt. He said it was all the farmer's fault. She blew. Oh my gosh, okay, sorry. <laughs> we just got another snow squall alert. Uh, I thought we were done with that. So it shut off because you know when those weather alerts, this horrible sound goes off like on the Poseidon. You know, you think that Chicken Little, the sky is falling. Anyway, um, back to this again. Sort of a deco look to it. Uh, it's heavy glass, I guess, that this was on a table and, and little, little condiment type things went in here. Uh, I don't know. Olives, carrot sticks, I suppose. But um, you could do a lot with that. That's sticky. I need to wash my hands. And then finally, for $3.99, look at her. Oh, just look. She is amazingly fierce. Beautiful picture. Anyway, I just can't believe that. And um, yeah, so she's never come out of her frame. I will take all those nails out of there so I can clean the glass and maybe someone wrote something on the back. Usually there's nothing written on the back. That's my experience when I find old photos like that. There's nothing written on the back. All right, I am a good 45 minutes away. I'm in Jersey now, so let me let me get myself back to Philadelphia before I get blown away. This is like the Wizard of Oz. Um, the Wizard of Oz, Alaskan style. Woo. Well, snow squalls and all. That was a fun day shopping and I'm glad you joined me. I don't think I hit any massive home runs today. Uh, I spent about $50, but remember, oh, about $15 of that, maybe $18 of that, was spent on items that I'm keeping. The portrait of the woman and uh, the hall vase and those little hedge clippers. The other things that I bought to sell, uh, I'm going to do well with those. And actually, I'm happy that I did not buy sort of the overpriced chipped items or the items missing lids and things that we saw in that first thrift shop. So it was well worth holding on to my cash because I did find some nice things later on in the day. Okay, that's it. Thanks for going shopping with me. Let me know uh, what you thought of my day in the comment box below. Um, thumbs up the video if you like it and if you are watching and you're not a subscriber I would absolutely love it if you would think about uh, joining and hitting the subscribe button that would be a lot of fun and I would appreciate that okay that's it I'm Scott from the old curiosity shop saying thanks for watching wait for the cat and so long for now